Hey folks, this is Mr. Fry back again with another video. This time I will be talking about solving energy transformation questions involving gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. Uh, as you can see on the screen here, energy transformations occur um, in a pendulum. Uh, and I'm going to kind of use this to give an introduction to the rest of the video. Uh, this animation comes from the Physics Classroom, uh, which is a very good website. Uh, and I want you to just take a second to uh, see what's going on here uh, as this animation plays a few times. Uh, you'll notice that uh, a pendulum is typically a mass that is suspended by a string uh, or a cord or a rope uh, from a point um, above the mass. So uh, that would be like up here where it's connected. Uh, this is a string hanging uh, and an object hanging from that swinging back and forth. Now, this is slowed down a lot uh, on purpose so that you can process a lot of what's going on. Hopefully you can see uh, that the kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion, and the potential energy um, change back and forth into each other. So this is why we say energy transformation because one type of energy can become another type of energy uh, and then that change can also be reversed. Um, so the potential energy that this is um, talking about here with the blue graph would be the gravitational potential energy. And that's the energy that this little swinging bob has uh, due to its height above the ground. Um, and you'll notice that as the, uh, this little mass here gets close to the ground, that potential energy drops and the kinetic energy increases until it comes back up here to a stop and then the kinetic energy is decreasing as it as it rises on the other side so um, feel free to visit the physics classroom website take a look at their animations they're awesome okay I'm gonna go ahead and take you through a couple of these word problems that I have set up for you that have diagrams so this problem uh, is says fill in the missing values uh, assume no energy losses due to friction uh, and it says the data relates to a 0 0.5 kilogram object at each position and hopefully you can see here this is like a roller coaster track and it's got positions one two three and four and then these boxes up here correspond to those positions uh, now take a, a minute here to look at the bottom of the screen too I have this concept of mechanical energy uh, and I have an equation for it. So mechanical energy is just the combined potential and kinetic energy of an object. So it is very possible that an object, depending on the conditions that it's in, how fast it's moving, how high it is above the ground, and another, other possible things, um, an object can contain potential and kinetic energy at the same time, and you're about to see examples of that. Um, so this question asks us to first uh, well, try to fill in these boxes. Try to fill in the missing values. And I'll, I'm going to try my best to, to help this make sense to you. Um, luckily, since all we're dealing with here is gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy, um, the total mechanical energy of the system here <coughs> is constant. Okay, so uh, if you add these two values, potential and kinetic, together in each one of these boxes, they should add up to the same number each time. So using box 1, um, 20 plus zero, so in other words the GPE plus the KE here gives us 20, uh, 20 joules of total mechanical energy for this, let's just say, roller coaster car, okay? Even though it's 0.5 kilograms, maybe it's a toy roller coaster car, okay? Um, now what's cool about these kind of problems with mechanical energy is you know that if in position one there's 20 joules of total mechanical energy then there's that same mechanical energy present at every other position too because it's constant it's um, it is conserved so I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my 20 joules forgive my um, writing skills here I'm using a mouse not a tablet so uh, this is 20 as well 20 joules uh, now that's important to remember because sometimes knowing the value for mechanical energy is the only way to get other values solved in the problem, okay? So I got 20 joules on all mechanical energy. Uh, and then we want to start thinking what else could we figure out in this problem? Well, we're still missing values here for um, gravitational potential and kinetic at position 2. That's at the top of the loop on the roller coaster loop though. 
Um, you've also got a missing value for position 3, which is the gravitational potential energy at position 3, which is way down here at the ground. Okay. Now, if you think about it, that's an easy box to fill in because, look, if 20 uh, joules of kinetic energy has to get added to some number of joules of gravitational potential to equal 20, then there must be zero joules. There must be zero joules of gravitational potential at position 3. And that makes sense because what is the height at position 3? How many meters above the ground is the roller coaster car at position 3? Zero. And if you plug a zero into the gravitational potential energy equation for height, everything goes to zero, okay? Because any number times zero is zero, right? So what else could we figure out uh, in the problem? What else do we need to do? Well, hopefully you've noticed that we have values here that are going to come in handy. So this is important and this is important to finishing the problem, okay? So let's solve for the gravitational potential energy of the roller coaster car at position two. Once, let's get this value right here, okay? So in order to do that, I'm gonna create a little workspace here and you, need, you would do this maybe on a separate sheet of paper or something. Uh, we put the formula for gravitational potential energy, mass, gravity, and height all multiplied together. And then we start filling in the missing values. We've got 0.5 which is the mass given to you in the problem up here. Um, you have 9.8, that's the known value for gravity uh, on Earth, and you have three, which is the three meters that we just grabbed from the diagram, okay? So let's solve that. That's 14.7 joules of gravitational potential, which means we could go up here and put 14.7 joules. I'm gonna have not have much room here for my unit, but that's okay, uh, and then, we have to remember that GPE plus KE is total mechanical energy. Remember, it has to be 20 total joules, so keep watching my gray box. That must mean that if 14.7 joules of this energy is present as gravitational potential, the rest of the 20 joules must be kinetic. Okay, so that would be, in other words, 20 minus 14.7 is 5.3. Joules. All right, we got some more missing values though. We're almost done though. Look at these boxes. Let's solve for the gravitational potential uh, at position four. It's a very similar process, so I'm not going to take a whole lot of time to go through this. Here's your equation. Here's your substitutions. Notice that mass of the car and gravity are the same. Height above the ground is only one meter here. So you're going to have less gravitational potential at position four than you had over here at position two, which makes sense because it's closer to the ground at position four. Okay, so when you solve that, it's 4.9 joules. So I would need to go up here to my boxes and fill this in as 4.9 joules. Okay, now we know that the mechanical energy of a system is constant. So if 4.9 of the 20 joules is gravitational potential, then how much of the how much of it is kinetic? Well, 15.1. In other words, 20 joules minus 4.9 will give us the 15.1 that we're looking for. Okay, guys, I hope you liked this video. I'll come back with more soon. And if you liked it, please comment, like it, subscribe. I uh, hope that you're into my videos, and I'll talk to you next time. This is Mr. Fry.